Shalom, Israel. Most High Christ bless. Welcome to another episode of 15 Minutes with the Captains. I'm Captain Naam. And today's topic we're going to be touching on today is Lamentations 4 and 7. All right. And for those that in this know you Israel and in the Israelite community, this uh, topic has been brought up several times via your friendly neighborhood white man, Esau. All right. But we're going to start to break this down so you get a clear understanding of what it's talking about. All right. Let's get that in Revelations 12 and 9 right quick. All right. Because Esau's agenda is to deceive, is to play on the minds of the brothers and sisters, the people of the world, to not see uh, truth. All right. Let's read that. The book of Revelation, chapter 12 and verse 9. Uh-huh. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil. That old serpent? It's a old serpent because it's talking back all the way back from Genesis, all right? That's the devil that the Bible speaks of that is on earth in, in the body of the Esau. Go ahead. And Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. And Satan. And Satan that deceiveth the whole world. The devil and Satan is the same, all right? They deceive the whole world. Deceive. Their job is to deceive you from the truth. All right. Drop that. Give me Hosea 12 and 10. All right. Because you got to understand how the Bible speaks. All right. And how it uh, elaborates or explains itself. All right. Read that. This is the book of Hosea 12 and verse 10. Uh -huh. I have also spoken by the prophets and have multiplied visions and used similitudes. Similitudes and have used similitudes. So things like a serpent is a similitude to who? Satan. All right. It's certain words that's used to describe something. All right. In comparison to. All right. A similitude. All right. It's saying this, but it's not actually that. It's a similitude of something else. All right. If that makes sense, Israel. So drop that. Give me uh, Lamentations chapter 1. I'm sorry. Yeah, 1 and 8. 1 and 8. Give me that. So we can clearly see and understand uh, what's going on. This is the book of Lamentations chapter 1 and verse 8. Mm -hmm. Jerusalem hath grievously sinned. Therefore Jerusalem. Jerusalem is Israel. All right. Because there's a people before us, a place. All right. Go ahead. Therefore, she is removed. All that honor her despise her, because they have seen her nakedness. Mm -hmm. Yea, she sigheth and turneth backward. All right, we turn it backwards. We went back into what? Sin, idolatry. That's why we were removed from what? Jerusalem. To do what? To go where? To Babylon. All right. So let's go to Lamentations 2 and 1. Read that. The book I'm giving you the whole understanding of what's going on in Lamentations, period, all right? Because Jeremiah wrote this, right, in lamenting of everything that was going on to the nation of Israel. Read. The book of Lamentations, chapter 2 and verse 1. How hath the Lord covered the daughter of Zion? The daughter of Zion, go ahead. With a cloud in his anger mm -hmm. and cast down from heaven. And cast down from heaven. What we would cast down from heaven, meaning what? Rulership. All right. To what? The Babylonian captivity. Slavery. Go ahead. Unto the earth, mm -hmm. the beauty of Israel, and remember not his footstool mm -hmm. in the day of his anger. Mm -hmm. So he didn't remember Jerusalem. All right. So now, Lamentations 4 and 6. The book of Lamentations, chapter 4 and verse 6. Uh -huh. For the punishment of the iniquity of the daughter of my people. You see that? We just read that in Leviticus. I mean, not Leviticus. Lamentations 1 and 8, all right, the daughter of his people, Israel, all right, as well as, uh, I'm trying to remember, uh, Lamentations 2 and 1, all right, we are the daughter, Israel, all right, go ahead. Is greater than the punishment of the sin of Sodom. So our, our, sin, our punishment is greater than that, go ahead. That was overthrown as in a moment, mm -hmm. and no hands stayed on her. All right, so I'm just showing you in context of what we're reading is talking about who? The children of Israel, all right? It's not talking about Esau to further prove who the daughter 
is the daughter he's talking to. We proved it in the whole book already, Lamentations chapter 2 and 1, all right? But that same daughter is talking about who? Israel. Go ahead. The book of Jeremiah, chapter 6 and verse 2. Uh-huh. I have likened the daughter of Zion to a comely and delicate woman. The daughter of Zion is us, the Israelites, the nation as a whole. All right. Go back. All right. Lamentations 4 and 7. Let's read that now. This is the book of Lamentations, chapter 4 and verse 7. Uh-huh. Her Nazareths were purer than snow. So her is going back to what we read in Lamentations 1. Lamentations 1. Let me just go quote it again. Lamentations 1 and 8. It says, and despise her. Remember, it's talking about the nation of Israel. Jerusalem, that's what it's speaking of. All right. So her is Israel. All right. Go back. Keep reading. Lamentations. Verse 7, they were whiter than milk. They were more ruddy in body mm-hmm. than rubies. Mm-hmm. Their polishing was as was of sapphire. Mm-hmm. Verse 8. No, that's it. So let me break it down now. So you got to understand what it's talking about. It said her Nazarites were purer than snow. They were, I'm sorry, they were whiter than milk. So it's talking about what? Give me Daniel's 12 and 10. All right. So the purity, all right, of the Nazarite, remember, that's why I started off with Hosea 10 and 12, is similitudes, it's comparing something, right? It's saying one thing, but it's giving you an example of being what? Pure, all right, clean, all right, without sin. Read. This is the book of Daniel, chapter 12 and verse 10. Uh Uh-huh. Many shall be purified. Many shall be purified. We just read that, the purity, all right, whiter than snow. Go ahead. And made white mm-hmm. and tried, but the wicked shall do wickedly. You say and try. What's, what tries us? The commandments. All right. That's what was trying us at this time as well. Of what? Being in captivity in Babylon. Go ahead. And none of the wicked shall understand, mm-hmm. but the wise shall understand. All right. Those of wisdom, those applying the commandment will understand about this purity. All right. About this uh, being whiter than snow as well. All right. Give me Matthew 28 and 3, all right? Matthew 28 and 3. It's going into being the white, right? White is snow, pure, right? As well as it says the light, all right? White, the light, all right? Read that. The book of Matthew chapter 28 and verse 3. Uh-huh. His countenance was like lightning and his raiment white as snow. Let's say his countenance. His countenance, the way he looked, all right? We had a glow upon him, all right? Why? Because he was keeping the commandments, all right? Well, whiter than snow, all right? So, uh, go back, you know, read First Samuel 17 and 42, all right? It's just another example of Ruddy, because Ruddy is mentioned five times in the Bible, all right? And it's all alluding to the same thing, all right? Go ahead. This is the book of First Samuel, chapter 17 and verse 42. Mm-hmm. And when the Philistine looked about and saw David, he disdained him. He disdained him. He despised him. Go ahead. For he was but a youth. He was but a youth. All right. Because that youth, David, remember, he wasn't out fighting like his brothers. He was uh, keeping the sheep, right? Keeping the, the, uh, the uh, livestock. Go ahead. And ruddy, mm-hmm. and of a so fair. he was a handsome young man. That he's saying he don't supposed to be out here fighting. He don't look like a warrior. Basically, that's what he's saying. Go ahead. And of a fair countenance. Of a fair countenance. Remember, continue to hear this word countenance. A fair countenance meaning what? The way they look. All right. How you identify them. All right. Go ahead. Was that it? Yes. All right. So go back. Lamentations four and seven. All right, 4 and 7. This is the book of Lamentations, chapter 4 and verse 7. Uh-huh. Her Nazarites were purer than snow. So purity, being clean, being without sin, all right? That illumination. Go ahead. They were whiter than milk. They were whiter than milk. It's the same similitude, all right? Go ahead. They were more ruddy in body than rubies. They say they were more ruddy 
in body than rubies. Remember, go ahead, keep going. Their polishing was of sapphire. And so it's giving you more comparisons, the similar to rubies and sapphires, right? So it's and yeah, rubies and sapphires. It's telling you and that were polished, right? So again, it's going back to showing you what like in color to. All right, read the definition right quick of ready. This is Zondervan Compact Bible Dictionary, page 510. Ruddy, a word used to refer to a red or fair complexion. So right there is where it's Esau trying to play mind control with you. All right. They're trying to trick you or twist your way of thinking right there. All right. Go ahead. In contrast. In contrast. That's the key word right there. In contrast. In the opposite comparison to, all right? They like to say it's them, but it's not talking about that. All right, go ahead. To the dark skin. To the dark skin, all right? So it's, it's, he, it's in his definition. He's telling you what he's talking about or who he's talking about, all right? Go ahead. Of the Hebrews. Of who? Of the Hebrews. Of the Hebrews. In dark what? In dark skin. In dark skin. The countenance of who? The Hebrews. So that's who it's speaking about, that ruddy. All right. We just read about David being called ruddy, handsome, a fair young man. The Hebrews. He's a Hebrew. Solomon, a Hebrew. All right. A Israelite. All right. Judah. All right. From the tribe of Judah. All right. So keep reading. Uh, yeah, Lamentation 4. Yes, sir. The book of Lamentations, chapter 4 and verse 8. Mm -hmm. Their visage is blacker than a coal. So it says their visage, their visage. I'm going to read the definition. It says visage, usually of the face. So it's going back to what? Their countenance. All right. It's explaining what it's talking about in verse 8. All right. The ready. All right. His face, his appearance. All right, go ahead, read again. Their visage is blacker than a coal. Right, so the definition, usually of the face, appearance, countenance, all right? It said a person face with uh, reference to the formal proportion of the features, all right? So it's talking about the features, the face, all right? So how they look, all right, their complexion. Finish that, read that. They are not known in the streets. Start back from the top. Their, verse 8. Mm -hmm. Their visage is blacker than a coal. So it's giving you a similitude of Israel being what? Blacker than what? Coal. Blacker than what? A coal. A coal is a black, and we got some here, but it's a black, uh, it's black, basically, like charcoal, right? That you cook with, that we light incense with. Right? So it's telling you that's what it's going into. All right? So Israel, just don't be confused or get uh, bamboozled by Esau using wordplay in contrast to, read that definition one more time. Because Esau plays on our mind. All right? And now we read one thing and they have wordplay and then we get distracted and now we're thinking, a totally different way. All right, read that definition one more time. Zondervan Compact Bible Dictionary, page 510. Mm -hmm. Ruddy, a word used to refer to a red or fair complexion mm -hmm. in contrast to the dark skin of the Hebrews. In contrast and dark skin of the Hebrews. All right. So don't get twisted or get confused. It's talking about us, the Israelites. All right. I pray y'all got something from the class. This, I'm, I'm Captain Naomi, and this has been another episode of 15 Minutes with the Captains. Lord, we'll see you soon. Shalom. Most high Christ you bless. What is the nation? Nation is family. Nation is community. Nation is men leading by example. Nation is women's support. Nation is children with role models. 